My father was like the Holy Trinity, with three people in him. The one in the morning with his tea and cigarettes telling us stories. The one who tried so hard to find work, but never did. And the one who came home at night with the smell of the whiskey on him. He would tell us stories where motor cars and airplanes traveled underwater. Submarines flew up in the air, and polar bears wrestled with elephants on the moon. If we asked him to make up a story about a neighbor, he'd have us laughing around the fire, and ever after, we'd look at that neighbor with wonder.
There was one day when I knew I was a man and not a boy anymore. Hundreds of Irish men and women went to work in England during the war, and they sent home thousands of pounds. When my father went to England, he worked like everyone else but drank his money in the pubs of Coventry and forgot he had a wife and four children in Limerick. Once we had a letter to say he'd be home for Christmas, and my mother said he'd surely bring enough money for a dinner and maybe we'd have presents like the rich people. But it was the old story. His money was gone, and all he had was a box of chocolates, half eaten. Ma'am knew there was no use talking to him, and she didn't want to make this Christmas day worse than it was. She told him, sit down and have dinner with us, a nice sheep's head. No, he said, he wouldn't have anything, just the eye of the sheep, which he plucked from the socket and swallowed. Then he said he'd be on his way back to England. He took his bag and walked up the lane, and when he turned and told me, go home, Frankie, go home to your mother, I knew I was no longer a boy. It's a grey day, and I'm pushing my little brother Alfie through the streets in his pram. I go by the Redemptorist Church, and there's my mother in the middle of a small crowd, begging for food left over from the priest's dinner. That's worse than going on the dole, worse than the charity from the St. Vincent de Paul Society. It's the worst kind of shame in the world. My own mother begging like the tinkers who hold up their scabby children on the streets. But soon I'm 14, and now I have my first job, delivering telegrams at the post office. We know every door and every avenue, road, street, and lane in Limerick. There are slow days at the post office, and we sit on the bench and talk. We can talk, but we are not to laugh. Miss Barry, the supervisor, says we should be grateful we're getting paid to sit there. Bunch of idlers and street boys that we are, and there's to be no laughing. Getting paid for sitting and chatting is no laughing matter and the first titter out of any of us, and out we go till we come to our senses. And if the tittering continues, we'll be reported to the proper authorities. The boys talk about her under their breath. Toby Mackey says, what that old bitch needs is a good rub of the relic. There's laughing along the bench, and Miss Barry calls to us. I warned ye against the laughing. Mackey, what is it you're prattling about over there? I said we'd all be better off out in the fresh air on this fine day delivering telegrams, Miss Barry. I'm sure you did, Mackie. Your mouth is a lavatory. Did you hear me? I did, Miss Barry. You've been heard on the stairs, Mackie. Yes, Miss Barry. Shut up, Mackie. I will, Miss Barry. <laughs> Not another word, Mackie. No, Miss Barry. I said shut up, Mackie. All right, Miss Barry. That's the end of it, Mackie. Don't try me. I won't, Miss Barry. 
Mother of God, give me patience. Yes, Miss Barry. Take the last word, Mackie. Take it, take it, take it. I will, Miss Barry. <laughs> At last, I have the fare to America, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I walk around Limerick to all the streets I grew up in. I sit at the graves of my brothers, Oliver and Eugene. Wherever I go, I hear the voices of the dead and wonder if they'll follow me to America. I have strange feelings, and sometimes when I'm sitting by the fire with ma'am and my brothers, I feel tears coming, and I'm ashamed of myself for being weak. My little brother, Michael, says, We'll all go to America. Dad will be there, Maliki will be there, and we'll all be together. Till Ma'am herself cries and laughs and says, my bladder must be near my eye. The night before I left, there was an eclipse of the moon, and my Uncle Pa said, this was only the beginning for Frankie McCord. He said I'd be back in a few years with a new suit and fatten my bones like any yank. And a lovely girl with white teeth and her hanging from my arm. But now I stood on the deck of the Irish Oak on my way to America, and behind me, Ireland twinkled and slipped gently into the night. Days later, I stand on the same deck, watching the lights of America along the Hudson River. The ship's officer standing next to me says, my God, isn't this a great country altogether? And I tell him, tis. <laughs>